ready to go with the coffee. Hey everybody, this is Burke, and I am here with Eric. Hey Eric, what's up? Hi. You may know Eric, but you don't know that you know Eric. But if you have GitLens installed, you know Eric because you wrote GitLens. Yes, indeed. Uh, All by yourself in a Saturday afternoon, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was actually, you know, Quite a while ago now, <laughs> it all started just, you know, as an idea of playing with an extension for VS Code. That I just, you know, saw VS Code, fell in love with it, you know, contributed before it was even open source, sort of contributed back a bug fix that it, we ran, I ran into, and that sort of just got me hooked on it um, and wanted to play with the API, so I started this. And it has become quite a thing, has it not? What are, let's see, what are your 9.2 million downloads there's a few folks using it just a couple <laughs> i have it installed myself and one of the things that i noticed about uh gitlands is that i don't think that i know even a fraction of the things that it does and so i had reached out to you and asked if you'd be interested in just walking through this video and so i figured today we can just sort of walk through the project and you can walk me through gitlands and show me some of the things that that it can do, sort of, you know, a small presentation for me. And then uh, I'll ask a bunch of dumb questions uh, because ignorance is my special ability. All right, so to get started, for people that want to, you can download GitLens here. You can be the 9,244,222nd in <laughs> act now. And uh, well, after you do that, Eric, here we go. Yeah, I mean, you'd normally be granted with the, the welcome screen, which just gives you a sort of very quick overview, just a little blurb about it. Um, but yeah. Is there, is that, can I open that from? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you, yeah, get lens welcome. This should come up. Is it like one? Oh, it's one. Uh, one third. Welcome. No, either. What am I looking for? Uh, it should be get rid of the E. Ah, space welcome. There's no lens on me. <laughs> welcome. There it is. I saw it. You have to be able to spell. <laughs> so this is what you'll be greeted with. Yeah, and uh, you know, it gives you just a quick little background, and then you know, there's there's a you know, there's a link a little bit lower that you know um, has a, the the link for the configure. And um, we can dive into that later, but that's one thing that a lot of people do miss is that GitLens does have its own configuration settings screen that is very interactive. Um, so, you know, GitLens is very feature rich. Um, so definitely take advantage of the configuration screen because it is a visual editor um, that, you know, you can very easily see um, what things are. Um, Yes, and I should also note that you can also support Eric and GitLens here, which you should consider doing, especially if you and your company use a lot of GitLens. Thank you. Uh, I know I will be doing that myself. So, to get right. right into it. Yeah, um, let's do it. You know, so, you, you know, by default, everything lives in the, in the GitLens panel. Uh, the new version here has it broken up into these um, main panels, and one of them might be... Hello. This should be a search one. Uh, is you looking for? Oh, sorry. There's a bunch of them. Let me just collapse here. Yeah. So it's broken up into there. So your your repositories that it finds will be listed there, uh, and we can go into details on that. And then the file history will show you the hist. You know, basically a hist list of the commits for the current file you have opened. Line history does basically the same thing, but for your selected lines. Um, and you know, comparison is a richer view that you can compare different things. Uh, I'm gonna open a file here and we can actually uh, look at this. Yeah, the compare, you can compare branches and then searches, uh, you can search for commits in the, in the repo by those different patterns. And um, so, you know. There we go. Yeah, so here, yeah, we'll show you, you know, some interesting stuff. You know, we list out, you know, who worked on it. Um, you know, the, the pull in a headshot from from Gravatar. Right now there is requests for GitHub. I haven't implemented that yet. I you know, there's some date markers that you see over a month ago. Uh, so if things are more recent, you can quickly see, you know, some basic groupings. And then any one of those things you can click on uh, will open up a diff showing you 
you know, the versions between, you know, the changes of that revision. Wow, look at that. And so you can also, you know, there's some right click menus, but there's some quick things that you could also do there is to, um, you know, you can open the changes, you can open them up in diff tool, but you can also just you know, hit the arrow to jump out to like, you know, if you have GitHub, you can jump out to the remote, to open that. This one here. Okay. And that takes us to the browser. Yep. And I'm not logged in for some reason. I got this issue where Chrome just keeps logging me out of everything. <laughs> have you had this issue? I've, I've had it a few times, but I also like switch between profiles because of work and personal. One second here, I gotta log into GitHub again with my multi-factor authentication. Nice and secure. Yeah, I feel safe. There we go. And there it is. Yeah, so it'll drop you know, jump you right to the right to the file, um, you know, and into those to those revisions. Um, you know, that 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 one was the you know root, so you got the same file. Uh, you can also copy the commit ID, copy you can also there is also alt. In VS Code, you can alt click on things for certain. Ah, so th this is copy the commit ID, and why would we want to do this? Uh, if you want, if you're trying to search for something, or you just need to, you know, you want to check that out, or you want to revert that commit, or do something on the command line. Uh, ah, uh, okay. So okay. just quick access, and you have to bear with me. I'm, I don't know if everybody is like me as a developer, but like I, I can use Git, but <laughs> half of the time, at least fifty percent of the time, I'm not exactly sure what I'm doing. So I know that you can do like a git uh, rebase i, I don't know, let's do head six. Uh, we'll just stash my changes. And then um, they, these are all the different commit IDs, is that right? Yep. Yeah, so when we copy this up here, this is basically what we're getting. So we wanted to even, or even add a comment, so if we were gonna do like, uh, let's do this. Oh, we have to quit. Um, yeah, you, you want cherry pick that to another branch or do anything there, yeah. Right, or even git commit and then add a message which just says like closes, and I think you can put in, I think you can use the commit ID there as well. Yep. I'm not sure though, uh, for pull requests. So anyway, that's where you get your commit IDs. What else can we do? Yeah, so you can also alt click on that and it'll copy the commit message. So if you just were alt, like, so option click or alt click? Yeah, option click on a Mac, yep. Should. Oh, on, the, on the, the icon for the copy. Oh, here. Yep. Gotcha. And that gives us the actual commit message. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Sure does. And then the other, the other toolbar button there is just to open up the, the file, which is less useful in this view, but it's much more useful in other views, which you know, just basically just opens the, the actual file that you're looking what at. Other, what view would it be useful in? I mean, you know, here it depends on what you're looking at, um, but if you, like, in if you like if you go into the repositories view, we can go to like a branch ah, history. Gotcha. So over here. Commit. So let's do Yeah. So then there, you know, you now you're looking at a commit and so now you want to open the the actual on disk file for that, you can click that. Boom, there it is. Okay, that makes sense. Very cool. All right. And then you know, all of those things that you know they have, you know, there's also some strong right click menus in there for, um, you know, like in, which is in either of those views on that so that you can do some terminal stuff. Um, you know, not so much in, in the file view here, but you know, like let's say you, you know, you're on a different, one of the other powerful things, I'm getting ahead of myself. One of the other powerful things in this view is, so there's two things you can do. You see the, the kind of location ish icon there. At the top. Uh, that's that here, here, right here. Yeah. So you can undo that, and it will basically that view will now stop following you as you go to different files. So if you want to like keep this history up, and like, oh, so yeah. if I click on this, yep, it will now stop following you. And then I go to a different file. Let's go to a different file. Yep, and it'll stay that way. Was. Ah, look at that. So you can go and look at that. So you can turn that off, and if you click it, it will come back on. Um, the other thing there is the, the icon next to it is the history and ish. It's really not history, but it's to like change the base. So like right now you're looking at the history of this file on whatever branch you're currently on in your repo. Right. But if you want to look at this file history on a different branch, you can just click that and you'll now get a 
pick list of branches and tags that you have in this repo so you can look at the history of this file on a different branch. Um, you could also, if you happen to know a commit ID, you can hit pound and it will switch to commit ID mode and you can just look for another ref, um, you know, which in, you know, in the file history becomes less valuable. Again, this is more valuable in other views when you're looking at other history. Um, but this is, you know, very powerful to be able to change, you know, you might be w working on, you know, someone's working on the feature branch and you want to see what their changes are compared to what your changes are locally. You don't have to switch to that branch. You don't have to go over there. You could just change this base and now see the history of that file on that branch. And you can just see it right there without having to move. Yep. I wonder, yep. um, okay, that's pretty cool. I, I was, for a second there, I was like, well, maybe, I'll tell you what, let's try this. Let me do this. Let's just do a, um, let's do a new branch. I think I, can you do that from uh, VS Code? I'm always confused at like what I can do in the visual tools and what I have to do on the terminal with yeah. integration. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you can, you can in, in VS Code. I think there is a command to create a new branch, um, but I typically use the terminal for that, so I couldn't tell you for sure. So let's do um, git branch, um, you know, some branch. And did you know that you can put emojis in your branches? You can, true story, it will work. Uh, Mine didn't, but it should. Well, now it's not working. It does. <laughs> Just have to trust me. All right, so let's let me uh, make a change. Let's move over to that branch. We'll make a change over here on this file. Uh, and let's change. And then um, let's see here. Add it. Yeah, pulsing cursor is kind of cool. Yeah, that's the that's some configuration in VS Code. I forget which one. So let me just add in. Uh, I only have one change pending. Yeah, so let me add everything. And then commit uh, some change. We can definitely add emoji here. My emoji is not working in the VS Code terminal. Someone needs to open an issue stat no. on on right. that. It is right. not satisfactory. <laughs> That is a huge bug. All right. Uh, commit. Uh, yeah, it's fine. And then do I need to push this before I can nope. view it? Okay, so I just come back here and let's go. Yeah, to I mean, like if you switch back to master or something and then we Yeah, can sure. So let me switch back over here. Let's go to master. And then what? Where were we? Yeah, so then in your file history. Okay. Click the little um, history-ish icon there. And the, right here, is this the right file? Okay, and then here. And now you can pick some branch. And it oh, and then it just pulls it down, some change. So now you can, right there, look at that. And you, now if you wanted to, you can also, so you, right, you can right click on that, and let's say you just wanted to apply those changes. So it will actually just take that diff and apply it to your local. Just boom. So Whoa. Now your local file has been edited. Cool. Um, so That's we can use that. Like this is, you know, probably less valuable because you might cherry pick the commit in this view. Um, but like you get this same sort of thing in a stash. And so like you know, if you've stashed some st stuff before, you might want to write, you know, click on a file in a stash and say apply those changes right now without applying the whole stash. You can also apply the whole stash. But so can is there a place where you can see the stash? Because I think yeah. I did stash. Yeah. Where where do you do that? So in the repositories. Is the repositories is really this rich view, which is gives you kind of an overview of your whole repository. So, you know, there's a few things, you know, right at the um, beginning. Um, so if you just collapse the yeah, So your stash is there. So we show you all your stashes, and then you can dive into each stash. And so right from the stashes, you can you know apply or or, or you know stash more, um, and then you can look at drill down into each commit and see what they what they've done, um, you know, show you the status. Those files were deleted, the ends were modified. Um, so let's just try this one. I'm just gonna say apply changes. That one is delete, I don't think actually apply as a diff. <laughs> ah, okay. But if, you, if you take a modified file. Yeah, we got a package lock, I think is the best we can do here, but we can do that and apply. Yep, yeah, there it is. Yeah, so that, that now should you should you should see that show up as a as a change. 
or not. Or not. Depends on if you're, oh, your local may already match that. Ah, gotcha. Yes. And, and I also, like, I open the file first and then apply those changes. So you could always hit undo and it'll reset back. So you just do, here you do that? Uh, so yeah, so if you apply, if you do apply changes, um, it opens up the package lock file and right. then applies the changes. So that way the buffer is always has an undo capability. So you could always just, just control. Command Z and, and it would just go back. back. But yeah, you're right. It's the yeah. same. It's the yeah, exact. it already matches. So you'd have to go like find a commit in history or, you know, or, or a different commit. I mean, here your, your history is probably not going to match. Um, but where, so where would we see his, I mean, where would we see that? Like if I was going to go try to find, like for instance, let's say, let's take, let's take a file we know changes a lot, like package.json. Yep. Uh, how would we view the history for just that file? Like if I wanted to go view the history for package.json, how would I do yeah. that? So you can just open, open up package.json in your buffer. Okay. And that. then, yeah, the history view will show you that. And then we just come back here to Git lens and go yep. to the, oh, that's right. There's a file history. Yep. There it is. And there is, a, there is a quick pick too. So you could open up, um, you can, from the palette, you can do file history. And it will also show the same sort of information, uh, less rich than the view, but it will show you the same sort of thing. So you can dive so into so I'm sorry. So run, the, run through that again. It's the command palette? Yeah. So you can say uh, file history here. And yeah, so not Git file history, but uh, Git lens, uh, show file history. And this will do the same thing. It'll show you the file history. And you know, one nice thing about this view is you can quickly search it by just typing. So like, ah, you know, so I could say if I was looking for something like um, you know, the better fill products, if you look for better fill or whatever, yeah, you'll get those sort of things. And then you can click on those and, you know, I. It's sort of like the right-click menu in the views on the, those things, so you can do that. Um, wow, look at this. Open changes, open changes with working file. What's that? So the open changes will show you the history between the commit of, that you've picked and the commit before it, so it's just the changes for that commit. Open changes with working file will show you the differences between your working directory and whatever the commit you chose. We can open the revision directly on GitHub. Applying changes, copying commits. My file history, nice. Yep, and then the show commit details, the last one, will actually show you more details about the whole commit, not just this file for, like those were all commands about the particular file in that commit. And show commit details will jump you back to a new menu that's about the, the whole commit and all the files in it. Okay. So there's a, lot of, there's a lot of mirrors uh, the quick picks were all the first rev before we before VS Code even had views. <laughs> uh, so there's a lot of power right through the quick pick menus. Um, and when you say quick pick, you mean the command palette here? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So VS Code calls these menu things here quick picks. Gotcha. Okay. So this sort of came first. This yep. was originally how you navigated through everything. Exactly. And then you got the API for. I don't know what these are called. I call them sidebars or explorer views. Do you know yeah. what they're called? I think they're trying to go with sidebar. So in an, each view in a sidebar. So like, you know, GitLens sidebar has many views. Works for me. And then here, under line history, so what's the difference? This is... So that will show you the history of the file, all the commits to that file. Uh, the line history shows you all the commits to that line. Uh, or, like, or if you select a set of lines, it will also show you the commit history of those set of lines. Oh, wow. So if you do, if I do this. Yeah. Yeah, so it'll show you the history of line 5 to 14. So those are the changes that, in theory, affected that, that uh, diff blob, uh, you know, you know, Git hunk is what Git calls it. Um, and then and what's, what's the best way? It's not accurate. I mean, it comes from Git, and there's some variance on how those Git hunks line up. Um, so you have to take the line history a bit with a grain of salt. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the best way to get out of this? Well defined, but line history gets a little fuzzier. Is this, when I'm looking at this, am I actually looking at 
I don't know what this view is, right? Is this the original file? Like, how do I get back to the file? Okay, yeah, so here, you know, so up the top, you can see that there's, like, that's comparing index.js uh, in this, this commit to index.js in that commit. So we'll put the commit IDs there. Right. Um, and so, yeah, that, you know, those are, those are the sides there. If you want to get back to the file, there's the, um, the third icon over from the tab is the open file. So that will basically jump you back to the working version of that file. So that'll open up. Ah, it. there it is. Or you can just close this. <laughs> that would work too. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you can always jump from a history in a file. And in theory, it should work even if it, the file has been renamed. So if you're looking at like foo.js and now it's called bar.js, you know, so if you're looking at foo.js in the history and you- Oh, it's been renamed. It should go find bar.js and actually open that working version for you. Oh, wow. And that's, a, right. again, assuming that uh, Git can find that rename, which is iffy with Git sometimes. Yeah, I was about to say, I don't know how it must be assigning some IDs under the covers to, to track that stuff. Yeah, I kind of walk the history of changes. So I walk back from where you were, and if anything sort of changes with that, I kind of follow that history up. Um, Git makes it a little challenging, but no. as long as Git actually sees the change as a rename, then I can follow it. Just to segue on this for a second, how did you get started? Like, how does one become, get to the point where they know so much about Git that they are comfortable writing an extension that does all sorts of things, including tracking files after their names have changed? Well, yeah, I mean, Git's doing the hard tracking work, but I'm walking back, you know, using Git commands to, to, to follow those renames because Git doesn't offer that very well. Um, but yeah, <laughs> um, basically just jump in and do it. <laughs> <laughs> just the hard, just read the docs. The hard uh, I mean, you know, a lot, a lot of it, it was, I, you know, I mean, I knew a decent amount to be dangerous with Git. I mean, I was no Git expert by any means, and I've definitely learned far more about Git than I ever wanted to know <laughs> um, doing this. But yeah, it really just came down with just trial and error, reading the docs, looking at output trying to understand how Git stores things. Um, and, you know, so do you feel, Eric, do you feel like you understand Git now? Or are you like the rest of us? <laughs> still, I still don't know. No. I mean, I, you know, I think I, I, I understand it decently well, but there is like, you know, a, a huge gap between like really just grokking everything Git has to where I yes. am. <laughs> I always say I can do like, I can clone, I can push, I can add commit. Uh, recently, I learned how to like uh, m um, uh, update changes to a fork, like with an upstream. Like yeah. just recently, learned how to do that. <laughs> so my Git knowledge is so basic; it's it's sad. Um, all right, anything else we want to talk about over here on the sidebar? Uh, I think if we just dive into repositories, because that is really like the main view where you'll probably spend most of the time. Um, and you know, just to give you a quick overview here, um, you know, we show you all the repos. Um, the little colored dots uh, have meaning. So basically, yellow means that you have changes um, in your local, and you have changes that you have not pulled from your remote. Um, if it's red, you have changes that you have not pulled from the remote, but you don't have local. Uh, if it's green, you have changes that you haven't pushed. Um, you know, so we kind of, you know, and then if it's blue, um, it means you have local changes that you haven't committed. Gotcha. And was there a way to know that without knowing the? Uh, it's in the, it's in my docs, but no, it doesn't say. I mean, you can hover over it here. Ah, uh, see it. Yeah. But yeah, and then so basically, if these things had, you know, so if you were looking at a branch that didn't have any commits pending or anything there, you would just see master, right? And then, you know, underneath there, and then you'd see the branches, remote, stash, and tags. Um, but, you know, because you have, you know, files that you're behind, I add a node there that shows you how many commits you're behind. So you can actually see all the commits that you have not pulled yet. Uh, so which is, a, which is a great thing if you want to just, you can hit the fetch icon, which is the full-on sync spinner up at the top. Uh, and that will do a fetch. And then, you know, so then you can clearly see what things you're behind and look at the, you know, see who's committed what and check that. And you can decide whether you pull down those commits. And so we're right next to there, you can see there's a pull icon. 
Uh, so you can pull down all your stuff. So what's the difference between fetch and pull? Uh, so basically fetch brings things down from the remote to your local Git, but don't, it does not affect your working tree. Uh, so, you know, fetch is kind of behind the scenes. So it does not affect the branch that you're on, the local branches. Um, and a pull will do a fetch plus uh, pull those changes into your local. Yeah, into okay, so in this case here, I'm just going to stash again. Get rid of my local changes. Here we go. And now I should be able to pull. There are merge conflicts. Yeah. Resolve them before. All right, so this is interesting. Does GitLens do anything for to help with merge conflicts and things like that? Uh, no, but VS Code does itself, and you know I actually use the VS Code command to do the pulling, so that you it does use that built in. You get that message that you have merge conflicts to resolve, and then in your like if you switch to the commit tab, you know, the SCM sidebar, um, yeah, you'll see the merge conflicts all in that merge changes section at the top. Right here. These are all the conflicts. Conflicts. So one of the things, ah, now, is this GitLens doing this, or is this? No. No, this is, this is built in. Um, it used to be an extension that I actually contributed to as well. <laughs> um, but it used to be an extension and ultimately got pulled into core. So do, do you know, Eric, is there a way on files to have just a merge view to where you're seeing, like, just show me all of the things that need to be kept. Uh, so I'm like, I just accepted okay. a change here, but if there's other changes in this file, I don't know unless I scroll down and find them. Yeah, I mean, on the scroll bar there, you see the blue line. That, that, that's, that's where the conflicts are. Um, so there, well, there's only one. find one with some more conflicts here. Like, let's see what this is here. All right, so we've got a few in here, and if I click on them, okay, it will take me to. Yeah, I mean, that's a, yeah, it's a, the, the scrolling there. Um, I, I think there are, maybe there aren't. I thought there were um, next conflict up in the toolbar, but maybe not. Let's see, let's go to a different one here. This one's got. Yeah, it's only got one as well. So like the green is the top and the blue is the. Ah, uh, I gotcha. Let's see if we got one that's got multiples. No, these are all just single change. Yeah. I gotcha. So this is the current change, and this is what, so this is going to replace this. Yeah, yeah, it depends on, yep, yeah, which one you accept there. So yeah, if you accept current change, you basically that code below will get deleted. You so accept it's coming, and yeah, it's just gone. Yeah. And I can just move around. Okay, that makes sense, man. I think I'm. I think I've like quadrupled my Git knowledge just in the last <laughs> fifteen minutes. All right, man. What else? What else do you want people to know about GitLens? What? What's uh, you know? So the, the you know the other thing, the, the big things that are in your face. Uh, so like if you go to back to a file here, you know, obviously clicking on any line will show you the history. Uh, uh, you know, sh will show you who changed that line. So you know, there's an annotation um, and. Pretty much, you know, all of these things are fully customizable. So you can go into the settings, and we can do that in a, a bit. Um, but yeah, so I'll show you, you know, what, how recently this line was modified by who, um, and then you know you can hover over it, and you get you know the changes that have happened, um, as well as some commands to jump to the commit, open the file, those sorts of things, um, and you know just quick access to that. Uh, so that you know that that is. You know, GitLens sort of main feature is providing that, and its second main feature is the blame on the whole file. So, like, the, there's the Git icon in the tool, the editor toolbar at the top there. Um, uh, here. Yeah. So if you press that, um, not, not that one. Oh, that. the wrong, a different one. <laughs> Their icon looks exactly like mine. <laughs> ah, here it is. Toggle file blame annotations. Yeah, and so basically this provides a gutter that has all the blame for the whole file. Um, and so, you know, you can see on every line who changed it when, you can hover over it to get more information, but then also you notice on that right edge there, there's a color coding. And so that's kind of like a heat map um, of, 
you know, how, you know, recently this line has changed. So like, you know, the 27 days ago um, is a little bit warmer, the, you know, one month ago is a little bit warmer and then the two months ago is a little bit cooler. It's all relative to the commits to the file. Um, and so, yeah, there's a... Ah, I see. So it's, it's up here 27 days ago. If it was like yesterday, would this be bright red? Yep. Yeah, and, and those co colors are actually themable. Um, you can control what the, the color range is there if you want. Um, but yeah, it basically yeah, it provides you a quick at a glance view to see, you know, was this recent or not? Um, and you could also, there's, um, you know, a, there's the command that opens that full blame. Uh, you can alt click on it and it will um, open a different view. Uh, and this one is, so this quickly opens the recent, the most recent commit, so it highlights all the lines that have been changed in the last commit. So all the, the blue markers there are all the, the last commit to this file, these are the lines that have changed. If you just really want to quickly see, you know, what change, what change happened last to this file, that kind of gives you a quick overview of that. Uh, so just the option or alt click this right here just yeah. highlights the most recent change. And then there's, there's no button for it, but it's equivalent. Uh, you can execute it from the palette is open heat map or, or toggle heat map. And basically it's just like the blame, except it just opens the heat map on the side. So it's sort of the blame, but just in line here without that secondary view. Yeah. I mean, it, in, instead of having the whole gutter blame, it just opens just the heat map for you. So if you just really want to see just that heat map, um, you can do that. And then there, there is actually a toggle um, in the settings you can set that makes these toggles. So right now, like the toggle, like if you toggle on the heat map, um, it toggles for the current file. And if you switch to a different file, it's off. What do you mean toggles? What do you mean? <clears throat> so when you, you, you run the command to turn the heat map on. Right. Uh, and you can you know, toggle it again, and it'll turn it off. Ah, um, got it. If you, do, if you turn it on, it really is applying to this file. And if you switch to a different file, the heat map's not on. There's okay. a setting that you can say to make those, the individual ones, like the toggle heat map, affect just globally. So if you toggle it on, every file you switch to will have the heat map. Uh, and then you, you toggle uh, it. And that's in settings. Yeah. And so, you can do the same with the blame, with the heat map, and the other. The, the, the individual settings for each one, if you want to toggle it globally or just for the individual file. So let's do, and we'll get into settings here in a minute, but let's do, one of the things Elijah Manor showed me was that you can, here, you can also do this, yeah. which takes you to the diff view, directly yeah. in line. Exactly. So a lot of these things that are in the sidebar are being put in line in the code, so you don't have to jump to the sidebar to get to the diff, but it's just right there. Yep, and up top you can see the little, you look like commit icons, which is the little dot with the things on it up at the toolbar. Which is here. Those, yeah, so those let you navigate backward in history and forward in history. So you can just keep jumping back to previous revisions and forward. So you can really just like go through the timeline very quickly. This just walks back through previous revisions. Yep. Yeah, so you can walk backward and forward with those. Those are all, you know, commands. Um, and then the middle one is if you're on a thing, you're on a particular revision, uh, you can click the middle and it will basically open up the details of the revision you're on. So, you know, you can get more information about the commit that you're actually looking at. So these are all the things that were in that commit. So if I go to this file here, does it take me to, it takes me to that file, go back, open changes for So if we do open file, yep, you know, come I just take directly to the file. Okay. Yep. Yeah, and so that, that you know, walk back in history icon is always there. And then you know, as you're in the revisions, um, you, know, you, you can go forward. And right now you're still in your working, so you don't get a commit. But then if you go back one more, you'll get the, the commit. Yeah, okay. There it is. Yep. Wow, okay, so I mean, this just does way more than I thought it did. So let's take, let's take a few minutes and talk about some of the settings that you think are cool that people should know about. Yeah, so if you go into just, uh, actually, don't do it through here. Okay. 
Go open up Git Lens settings. OK. Oh, I need to add settings. Yep. Oh, it's got its own settings UI. It does. And uh, you know, so there's this up at the top, there's simple versus advanced. Uh, you know, simple modes by default, but advanced will show you like everything. And it's not literally every Git lens setting, so there's still more there. Um, but it, it, it's a bunch more. So you can control like the general section has your date, some keyboard shortcut stuff. Uh, you can control your menus and toolbars. Um, you know, a lot of lot of stuff there, a lot of power. Because like one thing, you know, Git Lens does add a lot of like right-click menus and stuff to other things, and you know, editor icon, toolbar icons and stuff like that. So those are all fully customizable in the um, the other side. Yep. So yeah, I see it, and there's all the substitutions you can use. Yep. So you can fully control what the message is, what the style is, exactly. Nice. Um, I see why you created the, its own UI because there's just so many options. Yeah, and like you know, it's a little bit harder to see on this screen, but there's an there's an image below you. Um, Let's see here. Uh, actually, yes, in there. So like now, if you like click the toggles, the image will actually change to show you what those toggles do. Ah, so, so like this. Yeah, so it turns off the blame details and leaves the gif. Jeez, Jeez man. Um, I mean, you just. You so it's all. really interactive so that you can, you know, you may not know what thing you're trying to turn on and off, but you can just toggle them and see what it affects. And most of the sections um, that affect the UI have this sort of mode. That's crazy. I can't believe you built all of this in a Saturday afternoon. That's just <laughs> nuts. Been a little longer than that. <laughs> <laughs> Has it been years? Yeah, I mean, this really covers the high level stuff, you know, it's like, the blame, the gutter blame that we talked about, the hovers, the code lens, which we didn't really talk about. You know, it also adds those that have author code lens. Yeah, let's talk about that for a second. Let's take our last few minutes and talk about code lens. And I'll let you sort of give people the high level um, view of this thing. And then we'll just take a look at it really quickly and see how that works with uh, GitHub and Git. Yeah, so if you could click on the code lens, I mean, basically there, um, yeah, there, there it is, sorry. Uh, you know, if you scroll down to the image, you know, right there, the, you know, the, you know, we, I had a, um, you know, code lens there for the top of the file, which is an option. You can turn on the file scope and it tells you basically who modified this file last and how many authors uh, were in there. And then it, each block of code, uh, it also will add the code lens for those individual ones as well. So let's take a look at code lens. Um, uh, I mean, the code lines are just in the editor. Oh, that's actually in the editor. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So if you open up like a index.js or some some file that has you know the code in it there, so you'll see the code lines at the top. Anthony Chu, twenty seven days. Uh, so the, those. Ah, uh, this is the code lines. Okay, I gotcha. I gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's what VS Code calls those. Uh, annotations and you can you can interact with them. So those are also customizable commands. You can click on the you know the Anthony Chu 27 days ago, and that will have perform. I forget what it does by default because mine's customized. But one of those will open the blame, and the other one will sort of like open up the commit. I'm pretty sure. So I was actually Eric. When you said that, I was like, I actually heard in my brain. I heard this. Ah, uh, uh, this is what I heard. Oh, no, yeah. Said. Where is code stream? There it is. Uh, let's talk about code stream for a second. Sure. Yeah, we're gearing up for a, a, a big new release, hopefully in the next <laughs> few days. Um, yeah, and, you know, code stream. Um, you know, it has a. It, it's similar in spirit to Git Lens. It's not about Git, but you know, like one of the things with Git Lens is really to sort of like make code easier to understand and like, you know, show you more about the code base that's sort of hidden. So like by the inline annotations and being able to bring up the blame, it hopefully gives you an easier idea of what's, what happened behind that code uh, to give you better understanding of that. And so CodeStream tackles it from a different point of view, um, from really just trying to make communication around the code. Like, you know, we do a lot of communicating as developers 
on you know making decisions, talking to you know developers in Slack and making these things um, that all contribute to the knowledge behind the code base. But they're in ephemeral channels. You know, they get Slack and they you know, in Slack and they get scrolled off, or they're in a GitHub PR. But they you know once that PR is closed, they're sort of locked in that PR. And so with CodeStream, what we're trying to do is basically unlock those things by putting those conversations, those things into the code base. You know, we're not actually checking them in, so it's not like modifying your code base directly, but it's basically attaching conversations, threads, other information into the code base and with the code base. Uh, and, you know, it evolves with the code base. So, like, if you make a comment on a particular line of code, uh, as that code evolves and moves around, that comment follows it. Uh, you know, so we were, um, you know, with Git, Git, excuse me, are the only repositories we currently support. Um, but yeah, we're, we're, it's really all about trying to make, you know, code bases more understandable, uh, you know, so that we, you know, put more information that's important to the code base in and associated with the code base. So let me do this. Uh, let's just show you how this works. I've, while you were going through that, I've signed in the code stream here. And you can see that I'm in my, so this is the Azure Advocacy Slack group here. I'm going to pick one of these um, chats that I hope doesn't contain <laughs> <laughs> private information. Let's just do that. Uh, so yeah, here's Simone and I were talking about uh, tagged templates, template tags. And she, uh, I didn't know you could do this. Did you know you can just, you know what tagged template literals are? Vaguely, yeah. I, I it is, really haven't used them much, but. It's the craziest thing. You can have a JavaScript template literal, and then you can just put a function in front of it. No parentheses, just the function. And it runs that string through that function. It's the goofiest piece of code I've ever seen, but it works. It's pretty cool. So if I wanted to send, if I wanted to make some comment on this, I could right click this block and say add code string comment. And then I've just now, this has now gone into this chat with Simona. Yep. Is that correct? Yeah. Oh, yeah. One, yeah. Once you put your message in and do that, yeah, and, and that that chat with um, with her could either be like you could have logged into your Slack, which I assume that's what that is, um, or it could be you know our CodeStream channel. So we work with either Slack or CodeStream at this uh, CodeStream channels at this point. Uh, we're hoping to also come out with team support as well. Um, but yeah. So then you know that comment there now is now associated with the code. So, you know, now if Simona like replies to that, those replies will then, you know, get brought in, you know, they, she can even just reply on Slack. It doesn't, doesn't matter. Oh, and uh, it comes in here. In code stream, she could just reply on Slack and then those comment threads will make it into that, um, you know, that, that annotation there and that you could open up. I wonder if, I can do it and send it to myself. Will it work? Oh yeah, with yeah, you can yep. Yeah, I mean the the uh sending messages to yourself is great for just tracking your own comments. Uh so it, it actually go into the thread. So click on the Burke Holland uh test comment. Uh oh here, right here? Yeah, click on uh yep. And so now you're in the thread. So any uh -huh. comment replies to this thread will then get into there. So now these things should be associated with this block. Yeah, so like if you close that code stream window, I mean, you can just close it down. <laughs> this then, one right here? Yep. Okay. And then you can just hover over the, and then open comment. There, it will bring you back to that thread. And it, you know, ah, there it is. What you'll get. Yeah, so it's sort of putting chat uh, and comments right in line in the code. And how is this stuff stored? I mean, is it on my local machine? Like, if somebody else checks out the code, how do they uh, accommodate? Right. So it's a we're, you know we're a SaaS service, so you you know you can your your chats and you know if you sign into CodeStream, you know with our CodeStream channels, then it's stored in our servers. Uh, the the chat conversations, the whole channels. Uh, if you sign into Slack, that's between you and Slack. Um, you know, so between the, the you know our agent process that's running in VS Code and Slack. And then the only time our servers get involved are when you're actually posting that code. So we're storing that code uh, block and, and the comment associated with it. And then that's how we can move that comment around. Um, so then, you know, and we know the Slack ID that, you know, that post 
went with. And so then we can pull back from Slack and show you the, the thread. And so if I check this into GitHub and somebody else pulls this down and they have CodeStream installed, does it, is it automatically going to show up? If they sign into CodeStream as the same team as you, yes. Then they get the, they'll get the comments and everything. It'll just be there. Yep. They could pull it up and, you know, maybe I've, I've interesting. And they don't even have to be on the same branch. Uh, you know, they could be on a different branch and the comments will still show up, assuming that that code is still findable. You know, if the code is completely deleted, uh, you won't see it in the editor. Um, and we'll, we're coming out with a new version um, that is a lot richer on the commenting side. And, you know, I mean, it's more about different types. So we'll have different types of comments, questions, issues, uh, more stuff that you can associate with the code. So um, this, is not re this is not a replacement for code comments. It is not a replacement for code comments. But it, the point of it is to centralize the discussions that are had around, around the code so that it's part of the code. So as a developer that comes back later on, I can actually pull that up and read through some of the logic that was used when the developers implemented this instead of it otherwise just being lost in the ether. Right. You weren't there when it happened. Exactly. And I mean, a great thing too is, you know, like you're a new developer on a team. I see a block of code that's complex. Maybe it even has a code comment. Um, maybe. <laughs> but, let, you know, let's just say, uh, and then it probably does. Yeah. It probably doesn't. Uh, but, you know, you can select it and ask a question. You know, like what this code is doing, why this is here, why we need to do that. Somebody else goes and replies with a great answer. Now, that doesn't happen now off in Slack that got lost. I mean, it still could happen in Slack, but if it's, <laughs> if it's associated with CodeStream, it no longer gets lost because now that's tied with the code. So the next person could come in and say, oh, somebody asked why we need this code. Here's why. And, you know, we'll be providing more powerful tools for like you being able to like promote up an answer or to move that up so you don't have to go through a thread or mark things as an accepted answer to, to make that a richer UI, uh, to, to make that a better experience. Um, but it really gives you the power of not losing that because you, you answered it in a DM with somebody. You can now answer it in, in a way that is captured um, yeah. and lives with the code base and builds up that knowledge. I think it's a very cool. Um, it's a very cool feature and a very interesting service. I'm interested to see uh, how it clicks with people. Uh, I, I think people will find it super useful. Um, I I appreciate you coming out this morning and helping me to learn exponentially more about Git and also Git Lens. And uh, for people watching this video, I hope this was helpful for you. What's we'll some links in the description below to download GitLens, which you, you probably already have. Sure, if you don't, you should install it. It's great. Uh, and to get to CodeStream as well, you should check that out. Um, I use it frequently. We don't use it for code uh, on the team right now, but we use it. I use it for chat a lot. Um, it's fantastic for the integrated chat feature. Uh, and uh, you can find Eric on Twitter. You are yep at emodio. Okay, and yeah, yeah, make sure you follow Eric. And Eric, thank you so much for joining me, man. I appreciate it. This is awesome. All right, folks. Thanks. Thank you.